Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on theory and methods, looking at social action theories. In the theory and methods series so far, we've looked at some of the contributions of the big structural theories, functionalism, Marxism and feminism, to our understanding of society. But today we're going to look at a different type of theory, social action theories. And this is part of a bigger debate in sociology as to what type of approach to studying society is best, a structural one or a social action approach. So in this video, we're going to look at some of the social action theories. We're going to apply those across the core modules and the specification, and we're going to evaluate the usefulness of social action theories to study in contemporary society. But first of all, we need to explain what social action theories are. Social action theories differ from structural theories in that they take a bottom up approach to society, focusing on the meanings and motivations that individuals will assign to actions. It's a form of micro sociology that assumes that individuals will have agency in their decisions or the free will to act and interpret the actions of others in alternative ways. As a micro approach, they see society as being constructed by individuals and less influenced by social forces than structural theories would suggest. Society is the sum of individuals' behaviours rather than the individual behaviour being the product of social forces. Now, there are a range of different social action theories, from the origins of social action and the work of Max Weber through symbolic interactionism and labelling theory that we're going to look at separately in another video, particularly given their relevance to the A-level course. Other approaches that fall under the broad category of social action theories are phenomenology and ethnomethodology, which we will discuss in this video. But first, let's look at the work of Max Weber and his social action theory. Weber's ideas focused upon the motivations behind social actions. He saw people as being rational beings who were capable of drawing meanings from their beliefs and as such argued that belief systems such as Protestantism were the driving force behind capitalism. He also suggested that people acted based upon a series of factors, which marked his work out as being different from more structural approaches that were more deterministic in nature. Weber suggested that people act based upon rationality, tradition and their emotions. Effective action is based upon the emotional state of an individual at the time of the action, which explains why some people act out of character at times, based upon their emotional state. Traditional action, Weber saw as being actions that were based upon customs and practices of individuals, whilst rational action is seen as the individual's ability to assess the costs and benefits of an action, and whether or not this benefited them. This was also aligned to the values of the individual and the level of importance of their actions. Weber's ideas became highly influential, particularly in looking at the methodology behind study in society, focusing on individuals' meanings and motivations, and attempting to gain an insight of Verstehen into their experiences. Weber's concepts of rationality were also influential in the field of employment, with Weber's work on bureaucracy still seen today as being seminal in understanding organisational management. One of the lesser discussed social action approaches on the specification is phenomenology. Now, phenomenology is the study of structures of consciousness as experienced from a first person point of view. It's drawn its roots from philosophy and theorists such as Schultz suggested that individuals exist in a shared society that they make sense of through typifications of objects, activities and ideas in a similar way as psychologists describe schemas. We come to understand what objects and activities are because they've been part of our lives or life world. In order to exist in society, we develop a common sense understanding of this life world through learning new information which allows us to communicate with others and exist in society. Schultz argued that it is this common sense knowledge that we need to study in order to examine how we come to make assumptions about different social phenomena, structures, objects, activities, etc. For example, in suicide, Douglas suggested that suicide statistics were not adequate in assessing whether or not somebody had committed suicide. Instead, we need to look at the way in which a coroner decides that somebody has committed suicide. What influences their decision making? In his research, Douglas found that decisions were often based upon common sense assumptions, such as the presence of a suicide note or the history of, a mental, of mental ill health. Ethnomethodology is the study of people's actions, and one of the earliest practitioners of this method was Harold Garfinkel. He suggested that individuals make sense and order of the social world through what he termed the documentary method, 
a psychological process that enables individuals to see patterns of behavior in a specific social context. By analyzing this method, Garfinkel suggested a methodology of disrupting the social world through what were known as breaching experiments. As individuals understand social situations through patterns of normal behavior in that situation, Garfinkel suggested by disturbing that pattern, people's reactions could be studied. Now this is a method that's often used in prank shows on TV, where an individual will breach the social norms and conventions of a situation by doing or saying something unpredictable in order to elicit a reaction from an unknowing participant. The most famous of these breaching experiments was Garfinkel's Lodger experiment, where he asked students to alter their behaviours at home to mimic those of being a guest in a hotel rather than their ordinary role as somebody's son or daughter. These experiments depend upon what Garfinkel called indexicality, the ability of individuals to draw meanings from social situations and store those behaviours or index them for future reference. This approach demonstrates the importance of meaning and patterns to social behaviours as individuals look to make sense of society. In evaluating the idea that social action theories are relevant in contemporary society, we need to examine where in the specification we've come across them and be able to make a judgment on their usefulness in understanding society today. Weber and his social action theory has been used in beliefs looking at the Protestant work ethic, while his views on secularization and disenchantment demonstrate that social action theories have contributed to our understanding of belief systems and their links to capitalism. Faber's work on bureaucracy and the Iron Cage is pivotal to understanding the relationship between rationality and contemporary society, with increased accountability and scientific approaches to all aspects of, of social life. Faber's ideas can be argued to be highly relevant, particularly to those that work in education. We've also seen the impact of labeling theory in both education and crime on the course, and this can be argued to have given us a greater understanding of our interactions with others and social institutions. The impacts of labelling are arguably still evident in contemporary society, with moral panics and folk devils being created at increasingly shorter intervals in society. The contribution of social action theories to methodology cannot be understated. In contemporary society, approaches like phenomenology and ethnomethodology are more prominent in looking at social behaviours and the meanings and motivations behind them. And of course, Weber's views of methods still remain important to this day, particularly in relation to Verstehen and the desire for objectivity in the research process. Social action theories have certainly made a huge contribution to our understanding of society and the different experiences of people within it. Its application to contemporary society stretches beyond those already mentioned with perspectives on personal choice in family life, rejection of educational norms and how identity is shaped and how our own motivations have influenced political discourse at the forefront of their accomplishments. Perhaps one of its most lasting contributions though is the way in which it has changed sociology from being a top-down approach, looking on individuals as subjects, to placing the life experiences of those often not represented at the centre of debates. In our diverse contemporary society, this is what is needed to study social behaviours. However, there are criticisms of social action approaches. They've been accused of failing to explain how society works, often ignoring power structures or focusing on relationships between agents of the state, for example the police, and individuals, rather than looking at where the real power lies. They also underestimate the importance of structural factors in society. Concepts such as institutional racism influence the behaviour of individuals, while our peers, our family, education and media all influence our behaviour on a structural level. Their focus on small-scale interactions often ignores some of the more pressing concerns of the time and can be argued to be trivial in response to issues such as poverty, racism and sexism. And finally, the subjective nature of the research, with interpretations drawn from individual experiences, can be said to ignore the objective nature of scientific research and so is dismissed as less valid. However, the purpose of their research is not to appease science, but rather to explore the lives of those who are the underdogs in society. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on theory and methods, looking at social action theories. Thanks for watching.